All right, guys, what's up? A brand new deck profile. We actually have Eldritch, uh, the Golden Lord, and just sort of the golden archetype, I would say. Very good archetype. I did mix it this time with Zombie World. I might make a few others on this channel with, uh, with you know, kind of not, not Zombie World. But, yeah, this deck is actually, like, disgusting. It's really good. Every card, in essence, is a plus one. The only problem with the deck, honestly... Is as you can see on screen, I only have one copy of this. I only got one copy of this card out of eight boxes, which is maddening. It really is. One copy of this out of eight boxes, at least like three. Come on, eight boxes. Just think about the retail on that's like you know, four dollars a pack, 24 packs a box. We're talking about nearly a thousand dollars. Uh, but yeah, it's like that's a lot of money spent to only get one copy. Uh, but anyway, yeah, let's just get to the um sort of neat meat and potatoes of the deck profile uh so first of all this card what does it do uh he's you can summon him a million different ways off of various elixir cards but you can also uh summon him with uh various other things like for example his effect you can send him and a spawn trap card in your hand to the graveyard and then you can send a card on the field non-targeting to the graveyard which is a disgusting effect it's great for removal then its graveyard effect is you can send a spawn trap card on your side of the field to the graveyard and you can add this back to hand and then you can summon a zombie from your hand and have that zombie gain a thousand attack and can't be destroyed by card effects and this card has a really really good uh synergy with the cursed outland because when that's sent to the graveyard you get to get a free card uh but that's the thing with this deck it's like every card is a plus one it's like you can't make this stuff up it's it's better than the Sky Strikers, I'd even say. It's it's like outrageously good. And no one can play it. Uh then we've got three copies of Unizombie. We are playing, like I said, we are playing the Zombie World variant. Uh this is what I've been putting together. I think it puts a lot of monsters, negates, interruptions on board. And I like this variant a lot. So we do play three Unizombies. It this deck has no normal summons, like the Eldritch aspect has no normal summons. El Eldritch doesn't normal summon at all. So having Unizombie is just really, really good uh, because it's one of your only normal summons and it lets you put, number one, it, it can let you discard dead cards in your hand to search other things. Like uh, this, uh, the uh, Unizombie has really good synergy with something like uh, Elixir of Scarlet because you can discard it and then immediately that turn banish it and then set a Golden Lands, uh, which is really useful. Uh, but also it can send, obviously, zombie cards to the graveyard and then get you zombie effects. Then we play three copies of Sharon Nui Solitaire. This basically gets you to Unizombie. Play one Doom King. We don't need more than one. We have various ways in the deck to protect it and keep putting it in grave and, and just reusing the same one. But you can bump it up to two if you want to. Again, this is kind of like, you know, nobody's nobody's out playing tournaments right now. You know, it's an experimental build. Uh, two copies of Necrold Banshee to get to Zombie World just a little bit faster. Again, sometimes you normal summon her. She's fine. You know, she's good. Uh, then we play one copy of glow up bloom uh this is a super one of because again it's we don't like need it a lot of the deck is now the uh the sort of um the golden lance cards uh so sometimes you go into it usually as long as you can establish the eldritch lord a couple of back row and and doom king you usually win the game so this is just another avenue to get to doom king one mizuki just another kind of another option to send uh, so that is all of the monsters that we're playing in the deck. Next we play three copies of Cursed uh, Eldland. This card is like like really sick. All right, so first of all, uh, you can't declare attacks with, with you can't declare attacks with monsters that are not zombies, which is completely irrelevant because we're playing zombie world. So even if we summon non-zombies, they turn into zombies. So that restriction, I don't even know why it's on there. Uh, then the following effects, which are Really good. All right, so first effect, you can pay 800 life points and then search any Golden Lands or any Elixir card from your deck to your hand, which is like bananas because it, it makes it so you don't have to play three of things that might be bricks otherwise in your hand. So very good for that. And then its second effect, it's like terraforming for your whole archetype at the cost of 800 life points. It's a plus one because it's a continuous card. It's like, come on. Uh, then we've got the second effect, which is that if this card is uh, sent from your small trap card zone to the graveyard, you can send one Eldritch, either the monster, which is the obviously the Golden Lord, or you can send a Golden Land spawn trap card to the graveyard. And as you, as, as you may or may not know, all of the Golden Land spawn trap cards uh, have the effect 
to banish themselves during the end phase and they'll let you set another card. Incredibly useful. Uh, because, again, it's just more pluses. Then we play two copies of Black Awakening, Elixir of Black Awakening. Uh, this card basically lets you special summon a zombie from your deck or hand. And if you can... Uh, and if you control no Eldritch monsters, it has to be obviously uh, an Eldritch monster. And then if you do control an Eldritch monster, you can summon any zombie in the entire game of Yu-Gi-Oh! to your field if you control a Eldritch the Golden Lord. Uh, then on top of that, you can banish this during your main phase. Uh, you can banish this uh, during your turn, and then you can uh, set a Golden Lands, which is useful. This is Elixir of White Destiny. This is ex essentially the exact same effect as this other card but you can only summon from hand or graveyard but you know don't discount this one too much because this one is really good with doom king because this card is good actually with a, ver a, a variety of things but it's good with doom king it's also good with vampire sucker it's good with doom king because sometimes uh during your opponent's turn like let's say they call by the grave your doom king balderock you can actually chain elixir summon balderock and they have no target in grave and you get your uh, Doom King back anyway. It's kind of like a way to play around that. And it's very, very searchable, like I said. Uh, then we play three copies of Zombie World. Because obviously it's a Zombie World deck. And we play two copies of Super Polymerization. Uh, very good going second option. Very good going first also. It's a great interruption. And the discard, like I said, every card is basically a plus one. You discard stuff, it doesn't even matter. Uh, then we play three copies of Hakaeru. I don't know how to say it. I'm sorry. Hakiero of Golden Lands. Uh, this one, uh, basically all of the Golden Lands monster, trap monsters are decent in their own way. Uh, but this one, uh, when you activate it, it becomes a trap monster. And then if you control an Eldritch monster or Eldritch the Golden Lord, uh, you can banish one card in either graveyard. And that effect is non-targeting and they have to respond to the activation of this card. So, like, let's say you activate uh, you activate this. They have to respond to this activation. After that, it's it, it, it's not targeting. They can't like you, you never. They never know what you're going for. So that makes it like very very good. It's kind of like um, it's kind of like a Thunder Dragon Titan. Like you don't know what they're gonna hit or like a, a Chaos Dragon Levy in here. So in that way, it's very very good. Uh, then we play three copies of Conquistador of Golden Lands. Uh, this card, in the same way, uh, you summon it as a trap monster. Terrific. And then, on top of that, you can... Uh, right after that, uh, you can basically... If you have the Golden Lord on the field, you can destroy a card on the field, non-targeting. Again, incredibly useful. And then both of these, uh, you can banish from the graveyard and then set an elixir to your side of the field. This is uh, during the end phase. You can do that effect. But again, very useful. Because these, you can activate... Uh, during the end phase, so even if you activate this, uh, let's say it's your end phase, you activate this during your end phase, and then you uh, set the white elixir, and white elixir is a quick play, so you can use it during your opponent's turn. You can do all types of cool things with Doom King and uh, the Golden Lord and stuff like that. Uh, one elixir, three elixir of Scarlet Sangui. Uh, this card, again, very useful uh, for the deck. Uh, when you activate, when you activate this, you can special summon a zombie from your deck, and then if you but you have, uh, but if you control no Golden Lord, you have to summon Golden Lord. But either way, it's just very good during your opponent's turn. And then, of course, you can banish this card. And since there's a trap, you can banish it during either player's turn. You can banish this and then set a Golden, uh, Golden Lands card from your deck to your hand. I mean, to the field. Uh, then we play one Golden Land forever. This is basically the counter trap of the archetype. Uh, when a spell trap is activated, you can tribute a zombie monster. If you control the. Uh, uh, Golden Lord, you can tribute a zombie monster and negate the activation. And again, it doesn't matter if you tribute stuff because you're tributing in a lot of cases. Uh, like you're tributing basically like elixirs, which are trap monsters, and then you'll get additional effects. Or you tribute something like a Doom King, or you tribute a Prime Banshee, or something like that, where it doesn't matter if you tribute it because you're getting additional effects anyway. And then my favorite card in the deck, the Rivalry. If you set up Rivalry and if you set up Rivalry and Zombie World and maybe a couple of Doom King, like, like uh, Rivalry, Zombie World, and maybe a couple of interruptions from the Elixir cards, I mean, it's it's 
it slights out. No one's no one's coming back from that because this locks them into zombies. They're probably not playing zombies. They'll summon a monster. You lock them into zombies, and it's over. Uh, let's move on to the extra deck. We play first the fusion, uh, super fusion polymerization targets. Necro, Nether Soul Dragon, one copy of that. One Diplexer Chimera, one Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. Uh, for the Synchros, we play Red Eyes Zombie Necro Dragon. Uh, this is very easy to make because you can mess around with the levels. Uh, then we play one Formula Synchro Synchron because obviously we are playing the uh, Crystal Needle Fiber, so you can go into this in your opponent's turn and get a free draw. Uh, one TG Hyper Mag Wonder Magician. Again, same situation. You can actually use this to pop your um, searching card and then uh, set another card, which is sometimes useful. Or not set another card, to uh, send another card to Graveyard. Uh, then we can play Beals. Uh, Beals is actually really easy to make because the counter, the mon the trap monsters that you summon are level 5. So you can easily go into Beals because he's uh, the Unizombie is level 3 and then... Uh, they are, Unizombie is a level 3 Dark Tuner, and then they are level 5, so it's like a free, free Beals. Uh, then we play one Link Karibo, one Relinquished Anima, one Verde Anaconda, and just to be clear, the, some of the cards in your deck will actually lock you into special summoning only zombies for the rest of the turn, just, just to be clear. So we have stuff like the elixirs, they lock you into only zombies, black elixir locks you into, into only zombies, and glow up bloom, these all lock you into only zombies, and actually one more elixir, the trap elixir, but most of the time you'll use that during your opponent's turn. So they lock you into z only zombies, so you have to be extremely careful. You want to go through your regular combo, summoning the Preta Plant Anaconda, summoning the Link uh, Karibo, stuff like that. You want to go into that stuff first before you start committing to those uh to those other cards just yeah just to, just to be clear you have to do that because uh, i don't want people to say otherwise later vampire sucker the best zombie link to uh usually uh but yeah this gets you draws it's really good uh then we play actually it can let you uh some uh tribute using your opponent's monsters which is also very good uh then we play one avenger at savior for kind of going second ish one Crystron Needle Fiber and one Yoki Una, which is a uh, basically a Link Four for zombies. Uh, it's it's also it's also good when you're locked into only zombies, and you have a, basically you want to kind of punch for game and negate stuff in grave. Uh, but that is it. If you have any suggestions for the deck, again, I'm I'm very excited about it. I like the Zombie World version of the deck. I I would say you know I don't know if I like it more better than Pure. I'm kind of going back and forth right now. I don't think anyone's really playing the deck super pure. A lot of people are mixing it regardless. But yeah, I like this version a lot. I like this version a lot. It has a lot of various plays uh, because it can it can keep like it just puts so much so much on the board so quickly, and it puts so many interruptions and uh, frustrating plays to get around on the board. It's so it, like so many negates and and banishes and everything doesn't target. And it's really annoying to play through. Uh, and again, this deck has one of the best grind games I've ever seen in my life. Uh, but that's it. Thank you for watching, guys.